This is Lisa Harnish with Certification Partners. I'm here today with Stephen Schneider and Patrick Lane for the latest CIW webinar, Preparing Your Students for Today's Internet, the updated CIW Network Technology Associate courseware. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Doing well. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our session. All right. One more time, just for everyone's benefit and for our recording, we are recording today's session, and we will post it on our web on our website shortly afterwards. Um, everyone who is attending today will receive a copy of our slides in PDF format later on. If you have questions, the GoToWebinar tool has a questions panel. You can post your questions in there. If it's something that I can answer, I'll take care of it. If it's not something I know the answer to, I'll hold the question for Patrick and Stephen to take care of later on. And I believe that takes care of all of our housekeeping chores for the day. Stephen, you want to take it away? All right, absolutely. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the session today. Um, as Lisa said, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, network technology. Patrick, I don't know about you, but this is a hot topic whenever I go into the academic community and, and work with our customers and talk with uh, talk with uh, our schools that are looking at some of our certification tracks, and they come across network technology associate, and, and and it just strikes a chord in some people and not so much in others. So let's see what we're going to do this morning. We're going to talk just a little bit about who you're actually hearing today. As Lisa mentioned, James is not here uh, with us this week. Uh, out sailing somewhere, I think, or or. Uh, diving or, or something. Uh, but he said wherever he was, he would not get a good internet connection. So uh, we'll miss him. Um, we're going to talk about what CIW is just real briefly for those of you who are our first time attendees. Then we're going to talk about NTA, uh, the Network Technology Associate Certification. How we've updated it, uh, what it actually covers, how it fits in with preparing students for today's workforce. And then we're going to um, talk a little bit about instructor materials, how it helps you in the classroom, uh, availability, and open it up for questions. So sound all right, Patrick? That sounds great, Stephen. OK, just a little bit about us. I'm, a lot of you probably know me or have heard me uh, co-present with James several times. Uh, I'm the uh, certification specialist for the CIW program. I'm basically an education consultant. I work with departments of education, both uh, in the U.S. and and somewhat international, uh, working with customers on on getting the right program into your mix. I also run a lot of professional development training programs, so I get to work a lot of one-on-one -on -one with instructors and with school systems, getting the feel for what's going on. Uh, in our academic uh, community and working also with um, uh, corporate and business entities as far as skill sets that, uh, to include within the, within the curriculum. So, and Patrick, I'm going to let you turn it over to you and let you introduce yourself if you don't mind. Well, thanks, Stephen. Yes, I'm Patrick Lane. I'm a IT professional and an educator. I started developing uh, back in the 90s, um, started developing curriculum. I got a, a master's degree in education and a California State a teaching credential with the uh, cross-cultural and academic development emphasis. And I was going to be a school teacher, and then I got picked up by a, a curriculum development uh, company and really got into networking in particular. So I was going to be developing curriculum, but then I decided to go into networking. So I got my Microsoft Certified uh, Systems Engineer uh, plus Internet, my Microsoft Certified Trainer uh, certifications, and then began running uh, servers. And it was mostly uh, student servers, like you know, email servers and um, web servers uh, that would you know help the students in the classroom, give them services to access. Um, at the time that I also uh, helped develop the CIW program back in its infancy, infancy with uh, Om Pabrai, and then uh, joined uh, CompTIA to help on their uh, Network Plus advisory committee and helped develop the, uh, the CompTIA Network Plus uh, exam there back in the, the late 90s. And 
then moved to a, a, an enterprise, a corporate enterprise, where I was able to um, help launch a, uh, a learning content management system for uh, an 11,000 user organization, uh, which was really fun using, at the time, uh, Microsoft Server 2003 and SharePoint and IIS. And from those experiences, then, I was able to always continue writing curriculum. And so I uh, co-wrote a few textbooks, um, a few books, um, like uh, Hack Proofing Linux, um, which was a really good, a good book, sold at uh, Barnes and & Noble and such. And I actually co-wrote that with James Sanger, who's on this call, or who's not on this call, but rather, um, you know, is a big part of CIW, CIW as you all know. And, um, and Stephen, that's pretty much taken me up to uh, this point, because what I've been doing lately is curriculum development, and then also I've been doing uh, IT services on the side um, as a contractor and, and consultant. And that takes me up to today, Stephen. <laughs> Thanks for letting me <laughs> ramble along. No, that's all right. That's all right. You you do a better self introduction than I do, I think. But but you do have a lot of experience in networking. You've done a lot of work in developing the NTA program, and I think a lot of that um, uh, I think a lot of that has to uh, uh, plays in with today's session, um, especially with your experience with CompTIA and the Network Plus, because I I'm asked that question a lot. How does NTA how well does that go along with uh, preparing students for um, the Network Plus certification, or where does it fit in along those lines? And so that's definitely something that we can talk about today during our session, and something that you can help fill in the gaps uh, for others. Oh, uh, sure. For us. Yes, uh, Stephen. One of the reasons why I talk so much was just because I want everyone to know that um, you know the skills that I have was um, I suppose well aligned with. Uh, assisting in the development of this course, and that's why I'm really glad that um, you've invited me to be on this call because I'm you know, excited to talk about uh, NTA, this new version of it, which I think is really relevant to today's uh, networking environment. It it really is, and hopefully we're gonna we're gonna show that. <laughs> so. All right, we have to do the uh, two-minute sales pitch uh, for CIW, introducing anyone who is on the call for the first time just what CIW is. We are a skills-based uh, skills education standard, and, and really our purpose is to provide an, an overview uh, that encapsulates all of technology, uh, especially with our Web Foundations uh, course, associate course, uh, that intro to IT, so to speak. Uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. We're vendor neutral. We're not vendor absent. So we like to give people an understanding of what solutions are out there, how it fits in with your technology training, your technology sources, and, and show just exactly uh, what types of skill sets employers are looking for and preparing you for that type of employment. We are a globally accepted certification. We are international, as I mentioned. I do a lot of work. Uh, working with customers uh, with our um, UK office and our international office, uh, talking with uh, different customers. We have um, a unique approach to training because we are skills-based, uh, providing the skills that employers are looking for. We provide technical solutions as well as soft skills solutions in there because that's what employers are really looking for. As far as on the technical side, CIW was recently named by Internet.com as one of the top developer certifications uh, to have. We came in number three on that list, right in back of uh, Microsoft and Oracle's uh, Sun certification. So that's that's pretty good company to be in, I believe. You've got two vendor-specific certs right in front of us, and then a uh, vendor-neutral cert in there. And of course, you can follow the link uh, when you get your copy of the presentation to read the article in its entirety. But as I mentioned, uh, we are really that stepping stone uh, series of courses to get in there, putting people on a lifelong track or path uh, for, for certification, increasing as you go through, uh, go through the uh, job skills uh, for higher level jobs. Where do we get this information from? We work very closely with uh, academic and government and for-profit uh, companies that basically give us the input as far as the type of skill sets that we should be covering 
within our certifications and within our courseware. We take that feedback very seriously when putting our, putting our courses together. Different types of job roles uh, in CIW and how, how skill sets really set you apart. And I love some of these numbers and of course you've got the links that go along with it that really does show a lot of times, a lot of times Patrick I hear, well, you know, anybody can get certified. But does it really show or help you get a job? And these are some really proof positive uh, numbers that really show that, yeah, certification does actually uh, help you out in the job market. Traditional e-commerce specialist, uh, 63,000 here in the U.S., uh, and e-commerce specialist uh, that's CIW certified, uh, a good jump increase. And then again, same for uh, JavaScript. You can see a positive, uh, positive trend going there for the different types of salaries. Again, for the database uh, specialists, working with, uh, working with database, understanding the database design theory. And again, these values are in the uh, uh, U.S. We've got similar uh, numbers and similar proof that the same is true for, uh, for the U.K. as well, uh, positions there. Traditional web designer, a uh, very good difference between someone that uh, is, is just going in with a little experience uh, looking for a web designer position as opposed to one that is uh, CIW uh, certified with it. Again, because the certification focuses in on skill sets required to be a top developer. And then uh, what people are saying about the CIW certification, we've got a lot of really good positive feedback from people that have used the product, used the certification, and uh, have found it very useful for people that they're bringing on board. So, and again, all of these quotes um, and the articles that specifically mention them uh, will be available. All right, so let's jump in, Patrick, and let's talk a little bit about Network Technology Associate. Um, again, as I mentioned, a lot of people that I talk with, they either really like the Network Technology Associate course or it really strikes fear into them. Uh, and a lot of it just has to deal with the terms network technology. Um, but really, what network technology is, it's a, it's a way, it's an introductory course. And that's one thing I keep telling people. You have to remember, it's introductory. All we need to understand, especially in our wired community today, or wireless communities today, just how important network technology is. We're dealing with network technologies on a daily basis, uh, interacting with our mobile devices, our computers, our refrigerators that are able to connect to the Internet to keep an inventory of what we have in stock. Um, our cars, uh, you know, that now have onboard computers uh, built into them, um, how they're functioning, troubleshooting. It's going to become, you know, what happens all of a sudden if I can't connect anything? Uh, it helps to have a basic understanding of network technology. Uh, we need to ramp up on the knowledge for the Internet. Technical workers, pre-Cisco, uh, various web technology positions that are, that are available, uh, non-technical workers, uh, we create power workers with that foundation series. You know, if we were talking about the web design specialist certification, I'd be saying, you know, there's a lot of administrative position uh, job roles out there that are now responsible for web design for small businesses. And the same thing's true for maintaining telephone system uh, support. Um, you know, who are the first things we're going to, who are the first people we're going to call if I sit down at the computer and can't connect to the internet? I'm going to probably call somebody in the office. Uh, and, and that very well may, in a small business, that very well may be an administrative uh, assistant. You know, hey, why are we not connected? What's going on? <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and especially in our younger audiences, you know, our, our kids are growing up today in a network connected world. And so a good understanding of how we connect, what technology is used for communication, and how communication takes place. What information are we putting out onto the network? Is it secure? Uh, so it's uh, definitely a need for uh, network technology. Patrick, you want to you want to jump in? Anything you want to add as we move along? Oh well, sure. You know, just as an overview of uh, you know networking, it even though the end user experience has really changed, most of the things on the back end um, have not. They're mostly based on standards. You have some you know changes certainly in the services provided, in the way those services are um, uh, you know, even um, uh, transmitted out to the uh, mobile devices. Um, 
but in general, it's uh, you know you've still got your servers that are giving services out to uh, people, and whether they're in, have mobile devices or you know traditional PCs, um, and you've also got you know the the backbone of the internet, which is the same. Um, the naming conventions are the same. You know we've gone from IPv4 to IPv6 as we cover in this course. But other than that, um, and those are mostly transparent, you know, to the end user. Um, I think this course, you know, just from doing a few simple upgrades to it, um, have made it, you know, very relevant to today's learners. Technology basically is the same. The way we're using it, completely different, right? Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Yes. <laughs> And, and just as we're talking about that, you know, that 21st century computing, um, we discussed technical de details, you know, bring your own device. That's something that I'm, I'm hearing a lot, you know, people bringing their own devices into work and, and the, the type of issues that that has to, you know, the, the business IT department. Um, you know, if, uh, there's, there's a lot of issues with firewalls, connectivity, permissions things of that nature, but then also I hear the same thing as, you know, a growing trend in the academic market as well. Uh, bring your own device to the classroom. And, and the, in the academic community, that really raises a lot of concerns. Um, so it's, it's definitely a growing trend that we're only going to hear more and more about the more mobile uh, that we get. Um, no other program really empowers individuals with with these technologies, and that's just kind of what what Patrick, I think you were just emphasizing really well, um, it, that you know the way that we're using a lot of these technologies, uh, that that the back end is still basically the same, but you know the way we're using it, the more applications that are available to interact with it, um, you know that's that's very important. And one thing that the NTA course does, and and Patrick, please feel free to jump in because because you've been tweaking this a lot lately. Uh, we're, we're, we're platform neutral. We're basically talking about the way that services interact with network technology and communication and the way that we're, we use these different uh, applications or services to do work, conduct work, and to communicate. Fair enough? Agreed. Yeah, we'll be covering a lot of the specifics uh, later on in the presentation. Right, right, right. So, all right, Patrick, let's jump in and, and tell us a little bit about what, what's been added to the course, what we've taken out, and, and how we're dividing up some of this content. And we can start out talking about one big major upgrade to the course has to deal with cloud-based uh, topics, uh, cloud-based services. And <laughs> That's funny you ask that. It's uh, something it's new to marketing departments at corporations that are selling you these services. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in IT, you know, cloud computing's been around, uh, you know, for a decade or, you know, more, um, you know, simply because when it started out, uh, computing in general, you had your mainframe and then you had your thin client. Then it moved to more powerful clients and, um, and, and servers, you know, that were then, um, used in different corporations where they have their, their server farm. So things kind of moved out from the main, mainframe uh, out to, you know, the location which required those services. So then you had server rooms at all these companies throughout the country. And, uh, and then the clients, you know, became more powerful. We're doing more of the processing. Um, and now what we're heading toward is we're going full circle back to that original mainframe environment where you've got services that are offered up in the cloud, um, and the cloud is simply so it's offered at a server farm. So you've got a you know server farm or data center, which used to be the mainframe, and then you've got all these clients out in the, the field, um, whether it be a, a PC or a mobile computer, you know, a smartphone or a tablet. And uh, so we've really gone for a full circle um, in, in as far as, you know, computing uh, itself, um, you know, in, in the world after, you know, World War II and, and after. It's really kind of funny. <laughs> we're, we're um, what is it, Back to the Future? 
Back to the Future. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and you know, cloud computing provides a lot of advantages for us. You know, just as you were saying, software as a service, we're 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 actually able to use software directly off the cloud or off the internet. All right, and and we don't have to install it on our local machines. And basically, um, I can access it uh, from anywhere. We were playing around with some of those services yesterday with a presentation that I was that I, the, we showed during the meeting. You know, that was hosted. That's a service, and it's hosted off the off the cloud, and and I'm able to access it pretty much from any device. Um, of course, there are disadvantages to that too, right, Patrick? Well, that's right. Um, if I were to sum up how the course has changed in general, I would say we've upgraded it to uh, cloud computing and then mobile devices. And you know, a large percentage of the uh, content stays the same. And so when we do go in and talk about you know, the, the cons of, of cloud computing, um, what you'll find is that you know, as marketing departments have been uh, you know, getting um, mid-level managers, uh, IT professionals at companies throughout the, uh, throughout the United States and around the globe, uh, you know, they brainwash them, so to speak, uh, so that they will um, you know, think that the cloud is going to save the company money. And what we're finding it's not quite as easy as that. You know, think about outsourcing um, when that was a big trend with uh, professionals. Um, it's not quite as cost. You know, it is. It's not saving people as much money as they may have thought. So if you want to view the cloud, view it, it, it as an alternative, um, because there are some security issues with it. If you're putting all of your company data up in a uh, you know Google server farm, for instance, or um, you know Amazon's uh, Elastic Cloud, you've got other people that may have access to the data, and you don't have the control you did. So what we're finding is a lot of corporations are still keeping a lot of the confidential information um, at their location, because they're not putting it up um, on the on the internet. So you're going to find um, it, it's just an alternative, and it probably depends on what services you require that you're going to, you know, whether or not you're going to put that information uh, on the on the cloud. So for some services, it makes sense. For others, it doesn't, and you've got security issues. Always security issues as well. And a lot of this, uh, Patrick, you've also built in a lot of uh, of hands-on as well, right? Where you're you're actually going, the students are actually going to get some experience uh, playing around with things like virtualization, right? Um, well, that's right. We are going to teach them. Um, you know, about using virtualization because when you go into the server farms and they have these racks of blade servers, what you're going to find is that they have each of these servers will have multiple operating systems on it. So, you know, one server on one rack will have, you know, Windows um, Server 2008 on it uh, running services, and it will also have, um, you know, Linux, whether it be Ubuntu or, you know, Mint or uh, any flavor of, of Linux. And the, the really cool thing about it is on these uh, blades using virtualization, you've got you know, two, ser uh, two servers basically running on, uh, or two, you know, basically two operating systems running on one server. And they're both active at exactly the same time. Um, and so they're both providing services at exactly the same time, which is really cool. It's a great way to save money. You don't have to buy as many um, servers, and so that is just absolutely the norm out um, for cloud service providers. And so we actually teach them how to do that, um, which is a, a lot of fun. We're going to be using uh, Oracle's uh, Virtual Box, which is free, and we're going to be having them run uh, both Windows and Linux at the same time on their system. And it's a lot easier than you might think. And, uh, and I'm excited about that. Students are going to love those labs. I, I I think so, and, and you know, especially any time any time that we can go in and get our hands dirty, messing around with it, playing with it, and actually seeing how it works, tinker around with it, that's great. And the fact that we're able to use um, free services uh, built into the the course in the lab is is even that much uh, nicer. Um, then uh, talking about uh, security uh, issues. Um, you know, we we we've always talked had a section in, in network technology dealing with security uh, and the security environment, firewall setups, types of threats that are out there, things of that nature. But, you know, especially with the way the services are out there for, for personal use and for personal communication, 
we've really twisted it around some uh, to to talk about personal issues, right, uh, Patrick? Or? Oh, that, that's correct. Um, we're approaching it more from a um, individual notion, um, as you know, keeping per people's um, personal information safe, you know, beyond just uh, keeping corporate information safe. And the reason being is that you know we have mobile devices. Most of the data on these mobile devices is held out in the cloud. You know, held out, run on uh, you know Facebook's servers. And so uh, we discuss you know the fact that you know you have to keep both of those. Um, in mind, uh, but also just as a reminder to students about how they really need to be careful what they put out there because it can come back uh, to to hurt their reputation later in life. And this is a, um, a theme, an ongoing theme in foundations. We also cover this in um, in IBA or you know Internet Business Associates because it's that important. It it is it is you know once once you put something out online it's it's there and that's the that's a big area students need to to be aware of to be cognizant of of what it is that they're putting their information are putting online and know when it's okay to put information online okay. um, and and talking about mobile issues um, what do you wanna what do you wanna address here we 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 pretty well cover it I think. <laughs> Uh, well, sure. In in general, though, I said there's two main areas where th this course has changed, and it's been upgraded to be cloud aware, and it's been updated to be mobile device aware. And so, everywhere throughout the course now, you know, it discusses PCs, which the older course did, but it also discusses uh, the mobile devices. So we always have references, um, you know, to smartphones, uh, to Android, um, to iOS. And um, as well as to tablets, which run a lot of those same um, operating systems, and so that's the the other area. And and so it's just uh, you know interspersed throughout, regardless of the topic, they're going to learn how it impacts uh, mobile devices. Because there's more and more mobile devices uh, being out there, and I I even saw uh, a number yesterday um, on on one Twitter post that had information about um, how teenagers are actually using technology uh, and basically uh, it was saying that uh, 95 percent, Patrick, 95 percent of American teenagers you know, are interacting, communicating uh, with internet technology over mobile devices um, and and that's 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 a large number, that's a large number and, and that, that's to me very strikingly uh, important because when I am talking with customers about mobile devices in the classroom and whatnot, and and I hear you know, well you know our students they don't have mobile devices or, or anything I'm like well they probably do, <laughs> they probably do. All right, um, and and so it it's again it's important for students to understand a lot of these technologies. It's important for us to understand these technologies. Um, I I remember that I was uh, the network administrator on our campus. Uh, when I was in the classroom uh, uh, several years ago, and and our administrative assistant would would call and say, you know, the network's down. And I, you know, well, I'm sorry, I was I was just pulling a file off the server. It's not down, and you know, and really meaning that you know, well, the internet connection was down. There was something uh, wrong with our uh, with our provider, or, or you know, the the router needed to be reset, or something. But uh, that was uh, that. It just always strikes me as as we focus in on one technology and, and that's it, but how important it is to really understand, for instance, like our VoIP services, being able to uh, communicate with voice over IP, very much like what we're doing today. Um, it's how I'm connected. Um, smart TVs, and then of course these streaming services that Netflix provide or Amazon. Uh, gaming, online gaming provides. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you in just a second, Patrick. I was, um, one thing I always uh, talk about or, or like to talk about is, is you know, in, in web design, how download time affects websites, and is that really an issue anymore? Um, but when you start talking about the more and more streaming media you have, it, it might be a, a worthwhile conversation to have. Okay, Patrick? Well, sure, Stephen. I think one really important concept to gain from this slide is that these services you're looking at, VOIP services, smart TV streaming services, 
it's really a new application to you know existing uh, backbone um, internet technology um, that, that's been there since the, the beginning. Um, with voice over IP services, you're just you know basically breaking up voice into packets, which are still going to run over the TCP/IP network and travel just as any other packet uh, would uh, across the network. Um, smart TVs, what you're looking at is just a new end client, you know, and so you're just accessing your services instead of on the PC, instead of on your smartphone, instead of on your tablet, you're now accessing it uh, on your television set. And then streaming services, you know, we've been listening to streaming uh, audio um, for many, many, many years. And so, you know, what is happening now is just instead of audio, it's now streaming video. We've had media servers for decades. And so now we've got um, these same servers, but we're just running different uh, you know, services on them. And so I think that's what's important here to, to, for people to understand. Absolutely. And, and again, uh, going back to the labs, getting, getting hands on. Um, I, I love this particular aspect, and I know James is a really big proponent of it. This is this is actually James's game. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and let everyone know that now. You know, we uh, uh, loves a, a, a BZ flag, um, but you know, getting students to to learn how to connect with each other and how you know the basic understanding of network technology. Uh, what's a better way of doing it to be able to connect computers, uh, connect up uh, to the network, and 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 play a game. Patrick? Uh, that's, that's right. They don't play the game very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Well, it, well, what it is, it's an, uh, it's an example of a, you know, in this case, it's a, you know, mass multiplayer game. And, uh, but it basically is, uh, you know, functions as, as a cloud service. So it's ideal to see how a client and the cloud interact. In this case, um, you don't actually have to go out and uh, you know, get this cloud service. In, in this particular instance, you know, the instructor installs the, the service um, on their local system, and that's how you can do this. Um, and so, you know, VZ Flag it, it's free, and it's an excellent learning tool, as we say here. It teaches practical networking, um, and it's interesting. And that was one of the, the things that we had really wanted to do: is say, well, you know, if we're going to provide them with you know, a modern day application of networking, how can we make it interesting? Um, you know, are we going to do a content management system? So we're like, well, here's the file transferring over the network, you know, or, right. or are we going to have something fun? It's like, wow, look at this, you know, it's a real time, um, you know, in this case, um, you're operating, uh, you know, tanks and moving them and such, and so are the other people in the, you know, in the group. And it's just a free, wonderful application. You know, it could have been horses, but you no, know, it's tanks. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that was the point that I was that I was going to make that, that that you already already pretty much emphasized, Patrick. You know, it's it's you're you're taking you take BZ Flag out out of the operation out of the picture. It would be the same type system for as you mentioned the content management services, or an accounting package, or a graphic design. Uh, package or or presentation package where you're allow, allowing collaboration. Um, it's showing basically how this technology works and and how we're connecting with it. And if all of a sudden you come in someday and you don't have access to it, um, you know you you know to be starting to look for some of the troubleshooting procedures. Connectivity, good segue into talking about connectivity and and how uh, how we talk about. What's the difference between connecting up our computer to the to the network device or mobile to the to the device? And this difference between uh, LTE, 3G, and 4G, you know, is is there much of a difference? What do you think, right. Patrick? It, well, yes, we there is a big difference. In, you know, we discussed the the 4G um, technology, and in particular, the you know the wide. Uh, this is you know going to change everything. Is the you know, the 4G uh, mobile hotspot devices uh, because you're no longer going to need to have a cable modem at home, a DSL modem. All you need is this 4G um, mobile hotspot device, and you have full internet connectivity because it not only serves as your router, but then is transmitting wirelessly to uh, your, your local um, you know phone service. 
but you're also um, it, it's also a a wireless router for all the devices in your house. And so we're going to find a huge change. And 4G has now allowed you to get transmissions on average, you know, um, you know two, three, up to eight um, megabits per second, which you know competes with uh, cable and uh, DSL. And so that's going to be a, that's a game changer. And so we're going to see big changes. And so we discuss that technology, discuss how it works. Um, and it uses, it's basically a tethering service, which right now on 3G um, smartphones, you can, you know, set it up as a tethering device, which means you, know, you can basically make it the wireless router. And, you know, your other um, computers can hook up to your internet connection to your phone. Um, and then your phone, instead of having to, you know, have a cable that, that goes, you know, to the uh, cable network, it instead just you know, broadcasts out the, the last mile out to your local, um, you know, phone service or wherever they have any of their relays. And so that is uh, something that is really neat. And so that's where we bring up covering devices. But with 3G, it was not worth it um, because it was too slow. You'd be better off with your cable with DSL. But now with you know, with the uh, 4G, you actually get the same broadband connectivity. And that's the, the, the big difference there. Oh, okay. And then um, subtractions. Uh, how about let's talk just a little bit about some of the material that's actually just been pulled out of the uh, the conversation, Patrick? Well, sure. One of the things we had to determine when updating this course um, after talking to everyone in the advisory committee is, well, you know, here's what we need to add, but what do we need to subtract? Because now networking has been around, or the, the Internet has been around to the public, um, you know, with the advent of HTML and everybody started getting involved for about 20 years. So we have to look at that, um, you know, evolution. And then we have to determine, well, what's important? What's historical versus what was just a passing trend? And so that's one of the areas we really wrestled with. You know, when you study American history, you know, there's George Washington, there's um, Abraham Lincoln. Um, you know, you discuss those, but do you discuss the Floby? <laughs> you know, <laughs> a wonderful hair cutting device. Um, and so that's what we're really up against uh, when we look back at this. And so, you know, do they need to know about IPX, FDX, and Novell Netware? Uh, do they need to know about NetBuoy? Um, you know, the, the uh, media servers, um, older software development models that are no longer used, um, news groups, and you know, do they need to know about news servers and Telnet? So what we've done is we've really cut those down. And so, you know, some of the major uh, protocols that were used on the Internet, we still discuss them, but there's no longer any application around them. There's no more Telnet uh, labs. And so it's, um, it, it's just gotten to be that, uh, that we're mentioning certain things, but we're removing other things. Like we're removing the, the British Naval Connector, you know, which was used on some of the earlier um, ThinNet and ThickNet uh, networks, for instance. Um, but we still talk about, um, you know, CAT5 and CAT7 um, and coaxial cables, some of the basic, uh, you know, coaxial cables that are used today for, for television. Uh, but we aren't going to be including the, those um, uh, coaxial cables that we used for, like, ARCnet, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's, like, the difference that you're going to see uh, when you move forward with this course and I think we've done a really good job of it and and again focusing on you know really what's the primary focus of the NTA course and and how uh, we're, we're trying to get people ready to get to go to work in in the the modern environment in the modern business and 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 focus on those technologies that are being presented as far as uh, uh, networking as opposed to you know as, as you mentioned the American history version of networking so to speak <laughs> The separate right. course for that. That's right. You'll see them someday, though, on a Jeopardy question, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and then we've uh, we've actually taken some of the material and rearranged it uh, to, so that where it flows better. Um, uh, Patrick, I think you've done a, a, a really good job as far as from an instructional design point of view, going in and, and making the material flow uh, easier and, and nicer. And one of the one of the big changes I'll just throw in real quick that I think has been nice has been taking that lesson one that has been 
you know, mega lesson from, from Hades for so long. You know, you open up lesson one and it's just material after material after material. And we've really, uh, you've really cleaned that lesson up, um, made it into a couple of different lessons uh, to where we're talking about some uh, uh, network uh, definitions, so to speak, and then, you know, have our technologies. And, and I really appreciate you taking that and cleaning that lesson up and, and dividing it. Um, uh, and again, you've got labs that are in, in uh, the lessons now, getting students involved into it and working with it. Um, it just makes it more relevant uh, for, for what we're doing today. And then again, uh, Patrick, you want to talk just a little bit about some of the tweaks that you've made with uh, lesson three, again, updating it and bringing it more up to speed, uh, up, to, up to today's standards, so to speak. Oh, sure. Yes, that's... Um this is a perfect example of one of the you know, big themes running across uh, network technology is that you've got you know, the cloud services. And so here we are talking about you know, how servers run in the cloud and what those services are they, they provide. And so you know, we'll replace the you know, news group server, for instance, you know, with a server that, that offers um, you know, a, a multi-operating system um, you know, using uh, Windows and Linux, for instance, and uh, but it's offering instead, you know, news. Uh, it's offering uh, Facebook services or some kind of no uh, social networking um, application out to end users, and so that's where the big uh, change is. There, we're simply replacing older services with newer services, um, but the you know the, the 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 technology behind it hasn't changed so much. Again, the, the back end still working, same technology, services that we're running on the front end definitely are, and, and absolutely there are services that we're going to see uh, in, in business and how they're, they're actually uh, used. Okay, some additional uh, courseware changes for network technology, and, and Patrick, you've already alluded to this uh, earlier, uh, working with various operating systems. Uh, and and cloud uh, free cloud services uh, for for the mobile device. Um, anything you really want to highlight as far as working in in some of these environments? Well, sure. I think the first thing you need to note is that it's actually easier to work in these new environments than it was in the past. This course is going to be easier to implement than it was in the past um, because everything is you know matured and the bugs have been worked out and it's been simplified, um, and so. Throughout the course, you know, what you should be, you know, the, the classroom operating system uh, will still be Windows-based. It will be Windows 7. Then we, they would also use um, the modern browsers. So they would want to use, in this case, you know, IE9 if possible, um, the latest version of Chrome and Firefox. And, well, you could even use, you know, Opera if you wanted to because the, the course in the labs, even though we're using Windows 7 and Chrome or you know, IE9, um, you could really run it on any operating system or, or, or any uh, browser. And so it is very flexible, and that's simply because of the technology where you're finding you know, the end user can be you know, nearly any uh, operating system, whether it's um, you know, a um, desktop or a mobile uh, operating system for the end user. Um, and so also um, with Windows 8, when that comes out, um, the course will be easily upgraded to that. Um, so you should be able to upgrade to Windows 8 with you know, very little difference uh, as far as your classroom experience goes. Um, and um, I see there's other, there's other classrooms that are actually using you know, Mac systems. And that is also OK for the most part. Um, there's very few labs that are specific to the, the Windows operating system. And so I think that's you know one of the that that's my you know my main speech <laughs> on this area, Stephen. Does does that make sense? No, it does, and that and, and I do come across that, Patrick. Well, we run a Mac um, a Mac lab. Is this is this compliant uh, with a Mac lab? Is, is are there issues with it? And and I my response is very similar to, with what you had just commented. Yes, absolutely. There's very few limitations. As, you know, as far as specifically being towards uh, uh, Windows-specific uh, commands. 
And we have a lot of commands that are in there that work very well within the Linux environment. And you know, when you get right back down to it in, in the Mac lab, what, what really is running underneath uh, uh, the Mac shell, the Apple shell? It's pretty much Linux. Uh, correct? <laughs> that, that's correct. <laughs> So, and um, uh, you know, as as Patrick talked about, you know, when when getting the information, connecting the feedback from um, the advisory committee, as far as you know, what what actually needs to be pulled out of the course, you know, we definitely talk with them about what needs to be put in there. But Patrick, you made the comment yesterday. I think we were talking that you know, working with advisory committee on what needs to be pulled out of of a course, uh, it's, it's it's an interesting conversation. And uh, just an example of what some people are saying about the course, um, and and that what NTA really brings to the the technical training. Um, um, Jim Bush, the uh, from Consonus, you know, made the comment, you know, very very interesting stuff. Probably things I should already know. Um, and and it is. It's getting down to the um, basic understanding of what networks and network technology is. And, and Patrick, I want to throw this back out to you at, at this time because at, I made the comment at the beginning about you know one of the common questions, the feedback that we get as far as where network technology associate fits in line with that whole Comp, CompTIA Net Plus certification. And for a long time, I've always I've always told people you know this is really pre Net Plus. This gets you the the entry level understanding of what networks are, how they communicate, how you're interacting with them, services that you're using. And once you have this down under your belt, then it's a logical step to move into something like A plus, net plus, that it's at that level uh, prep course. Um, and, and I want to get your feedback on that as, as we move forward, Patrick. Oh, uh, no, I absolutely agree with that. Um, when we were developing Network Plus, it was meant to be, you know, a, a course that a lot of introductory certifications, you know, would be sent to. Um, there was a huge argument even about A plus. You know, if people take A plus, then they go into networking. Um, but those are, you know, in some ways um, equal, I would say. Um, but with CIW Foundations, you know, going into Network Plus or even A plus, you know, to me makes a whole lot of sense. Um, because when you get into Network Plus, you're getting into specifics. Uh, you know, major specifics that, that go into it, uh, you know, and talk about much more detail about IPv4 and IPv6. Um, they also talk a lot more in depth about, you know, some of the older um, subnetting technologies used with, uh, with IPv4. Um, and you get down to the, the brass tacks as far as, you know, different interfaces that, that might be used. Um, you know, some of the more technically specific areas, which we we try to keep networking, you know, a little bit more on an overview level instead of doing a deep dive. And so I would say that's the, the difference. And so if someone takes NTA and they are interested and they like it, then they should absolutely go to Network Plus because that's when they would do, you know, a little more of a, of a deep dive. Although it's an entry level cert, it would be, you know, an excellent um, way to you know pursue their interests in networking. Okay, cool, very good. Well, let's take a little bit about um, talk about CIW courseware and instructors. Um, all of our lessons and and Patrick, you know, you definitely jump in as far as you know as as you've gone through and done a lot of the work on on the courses, but really. You know our lessons are mod our courses are modular. They can be offered in in any particular order. Um, we're, we're the lessons, especially in NTA and and, and how you integrate uh, services like um, uh, our our tank game. Um, you know they build on each other. We're starting out with an introductory level and then moving on with with complexity. Um, the hands-on labs that that move through there. But of course, you know if there's a particular lesson that you doesn't Think fit in, then it can easily, easily be uh, uh, pulled out or rearranged and, and taught in a different order. Um, IBA is one of those courses I think is definitely one that can be taught, you know, uh, out of order. Um, and and really, network uh, technologies uh, can be like that uh, as well. Um, courseware features uh, of, of 
course, we're trying to go more along the lines of, of P, uh, PDF-based courseware. Um, we have a lot of resources that are available on CIW Online. Our course mastery, which you know, Patrick, you've heard me refer to before, is like the the uh, drill and kill on on steroids, where we're we're actually asking the questions, but then also along with that, you're asked for your comfort level. And there's a lot of learning psychology in back of that that says, you know, when when you're really thinking about a question and and how sure you are, unsure you are of it. Uh, it really speeds up the learning process, especially when you put in the information about you know, the, the support material uh, for you know, the questions that a, a person missed. Supplemental videos that goes along with each lesson, uh, exercise, exercises for the lessons, again, engaging exercises that allow students to go in and, and pretty much measure their comfort level. Uh, and of course, practice exams that are actually getting uh, students ready for the actual certification. Um, if you're already implementing the uh, Network Technology Associate and would like information on, on seeing some more specific detailed information as far as the revision history, that of course can be provided to you. Uh, contact us and we'll uh, definitely send you the blueprint. You can see uh, the topics that have changed, taken out or, or added in uh, in more detail for you. And then um, also, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we do instructor training, uh, professional development programs, and that's something that uh, is, is able to be offered either in a face-to-face -face environment or online uh, in a, a blended approach. So if you would like some more information on professional development, getting up to speed or getting the NTA certification, if you're looking at implementing uh, CIW NTA or any of our uh, CIW products within the classroom, we are here to help and support, and so contact uh, info at CIWCertified.com, and we can uh, definitely talk about it. So when is all this good stuff going to be available? Uh, NTA, Network Technology Associate, will be available in August of this year, ready for the, uh, ready for the classroom, and the exam, uh, the updated exam, will be ready in December. Network Technology Associate, you know, as we kind of mentioned before, is really part of the Web Foundation's associate certification. We also have updated courses, and you can go back and review recording of the webinars that talk about development associates. Uh, again, these courses are going to be ready in August, and the exam sites in this month. And really, uh, when you throw in Network Technology Associate, that's providing that holistic overview of the technology field, the career path what I refer to a lot as uh, the, the intro to information technology type program. Other programs that we have out and available, web design specialists uh, that, that are ready to go right now for uh, preparing for careers in, uh, in uh, web design and understanding project management within that. And then of course web security. Uh, which is a, a great course that gets people onto the intro track, the uh, foundational level of, of web security and, and network security and information management, uh, preparing them for further certification uh, tracks. Uh, and of course, NTA is a build-in for all of those courses too. It gives that bottom uh, level understanding. Um, someone with the NTA certification moving into security, uh, it's a logical step. Uh, if they like that section on security of taking that security associate uh, certification or moving into web design, they understand how web servers are going to work. Uh, NTA, as I mentioned before, and, and Patrick, you know, jump in any time, that, that this is really something that anyone going into business, a lot of the services that we talk about, um, and, and information management, it's, it's something that we need as we're doing more online, as we're doing more with cloud-based services, as we're doing more with convergence technology in the workplace. Patrick, thoughts? Yeah, I think students can go as far as they want. Um, we've got uh, Hadoop shortages um, across the globe, and Hadoop is a, it's a technology that's used in, um, for, for cloud services, and you'll find it at um, a lot of server farms and uh, in data centers because it enables you to uh, link um, thousands and thousands of the servers 
uh, together using this one interface. And so you install, you know, Hadoop on all your clients, and then you can run it from a, you know, a few master servers. And uh, the, the, you know, the big difference about Hadoop is that you know, it'll, it'll link together, you know, unrelated uh, networks or unrelated uh, computers, whereas before you would have had to have, you know, everyone on the same uh, domain. Uh, for instance, if you're running, uh, you know, Windows Server, um, this enables you to, you don't have to do that. And so you can literally, like if your company were to even acquire another company, you could install Hadoop on them and then um, you would be able to then, you know, utilize all the servers uh, together as one. And so it's a really great technology, but uh, there are very few people that know how to use it. So that would be one area, anyhow, that, that students could, could go into. There appears to be no end to, you know, a high, to an intelligent, um, highly educated uh, person in, in networking, as far as I can tell. Yeah, the, the technology is not going away, right? And at this point, I, I would like to turn it over to, to Lisa, and we've got just a few minutes left in our time. If, if there's any questions that we could address or if you've already handled. Well, as we've indicated, we've got our contact information up there. Um, as I've said before, we will email this presentation out to uh, everyone who attended later on today or t tomorrow. Um, we will also post the recording of this session on our website so you can go back and review it at the future, in the future if you need to or send your colleagues to it, for example. We do appreciate your participation today and, and attendance. We thank you very much, and if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us afterwards. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. All right. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Patrick. You, you bet. Thank you.